hello all i guess uh, that today we have a very less audience but uh, i don't have a option i should cover this class today i cannot push it further i don't have any bandwidth next week or even that to that week so uh, i'll just finish this for today and anybody who is missing can actually go through my recording and as we already know that we are only left with these four topics pivot merge map and apply so which we'll be covering up today i just wanted to uh, wait a minute uh, to kind of allow you to recap yesterday's class and then let me know if you have any doubts uh, or else i can jump into today's topic uh, we, we could actually recap yesterday's class but unfortunately these four topics are quite uh, uh, time engaging topics so uh, i don't want to waste any time in recapping today but i can wait for a couple of minutes you to kind of revise and let me know if you have any doubts or maybe we can have one doubt session later in later point of time i'll wait and you please let me know if you have any doubts hope my uh, screen is visible to everyone i haven't asked actually yeah Yes, today I, I also enabled the mic so that we don't have an issue like yesterday. Yeah. So I'm taking silence as no, that uh, I'm hoping that nobody has any doubts. Maybe you need to practice more to kind of uh, maybe come with some potential doubts. So kind of getting into today's topic i'll start with group by so group by is nothing uh, uh, complex uh, like any other concept is very simple it is just that you are trying to kind of aggregate a column using one column assume that uh, we have already filtered uh, uh, with courier status equals to shipped in our previous uh, class and now we want to identify what is the sum of amount with the condition uh, with the condition uh, where courier status equal to shipped. How do you do that? So in Excel, it is very simple. So it kind of uh, give you a small uh, manual demo of what we are trying to achieve. I'll just uh... so this is our uh, like what data and now. I'll kind of apply the filters. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So now what I want, I want courier status equals to shipped. And then now I, I want to kind of sum up uh, the amount column. So now you can see the amount comes up to some 71058, something like that. So now if you want to do this in uh, Excel, either you have to use pivot or write Com, uh, like formulas which says which actually identifies this particular courier status column and then apply a condition called shipped and then you have to take uh, amount as a column and then submit but when come when it comes to pandas you can do everything in one single line so let's do that so let's check results sum let's do uh, okay let's do one thing uh, let's kind of sum up the whole value first and then Let's check, uh, let's check the sum of uh, all the conditions like shipped, unshipped, cancelled. So we have three different conditions. Let's check the sum for three different conditions together as one output. So we, I just wrote a variable called or declared a variable called result sum. And now what I'm trying to do, I'll just say df dot group by. So I am trying to group elements by their type so when if i take a column called 
courier status only or see status which we have renamed yesterday so if i probably take that column so what i am trying to do in that particular column we have three unique elements one is shipped unshipped and cancelled so what i will do i will group shipped together unshipped together and cancelled together and then whatever the amount is associated for shipped i will submit together uh, and and apply the same method for other two things to kind of explain you in a very simple method let me just take a uh, small example here i'll say that uh, give me one second yeah yeah i'll say that i have a column called maybe let's say uh, t-shirt size okay t-shirt size let's say we have a column called t-shirt size and in in this t-shirt size column we have three different sizes maybe like a uh, small then medium then then large so we have three different sizes and for each size there is a uh, price so i'll just also put price here price and i'll say i i have a price of 80 rupees and then i have a uh, it is for 90 rupees and it is for 100 rupees i know you have such t-shirts some lakhs of t-shirts and each of the t-shirt size you have it here and you have the price for it okay so what you can like i'll just also go on writing the same thing s m l s m l and so on so we have uh, the repeated values and what i want to do is i want to see what is the amount of all the small size t-shirts what is the amount or maybe price for all the uh, sum of price for all the medium size t-shirts price for all large size t-shirts so how could i do that i'll just identify s 80 s 80 here and s 80 here i'll add up together it, it becomes 240 so now what i want to do i want to repeat this particular example here with category uh, sorry with uh, courier status uh, column because we have three four different types of categ uh, categories in courier status column and i want to sum the amount column especially by grouping each of the similar elements in cat uh, courier status column so that is the reason we use this keyword called group by so what it will try to do it will try to identify unique elements in the column and group them individually and then whatever the associated column which you take let it be quantity let it be amount whatever the numerical column you take you can probably apply any uh, mathematical inference formula to it maybe you want sum you want mean you want median you want uh, average average or mean is same or you, you want something else you can apply it so simply uh, let me kind of give you an example of that oh sorry df dot group by and then i'll just start uh, like start with parenthesis so in this parenthesis sorry it is group by okay in parenthesis i'll take the column c status because we have renamed the column from courier status to c status and then i'll just take the column what you want to kind of add up which is amount so i want to add up amount and i'll say dot sum so what it basically do is it will try to kind of uh, identify c status column see how many uh, elements unique elements we have in c status and then uh, identify amount associated for that each uh, unique element and then sum together so let me run the whole of the thing at once uh, today this is the first time i'm running so okay i am yeah print results sum so I'm, I'm just checking why it is not printing I forgot yeah so let me run it again and you can see that uh, cancelled is zero we don't have any amount associated for cancelled for shipped we have this much of amount and unshipped we have this much of amount so it itself kind of grouped all the cancelled items together grouped all the shipped items together grouped all the unshipped items together that is the reason we called uh, like we, we used a keyword called group by that is the essence of using group by so you can uh, try it with any other column which has multiple categories 
no matter what it will try to group by and then give you uh, any output so where where you can use this in kind of taking the immediate inferences now assume that somebody have asked you uh, what is the uh, percentage of change in shipped sales last year and this year so what you do you kind of group by data or you kind of slice the data in uh, like what last year and this year's data and then you probably apply group by for both and immediately you can see what is the ship demo for last year ship demo for this year and simply you can apply a sim uh, formula uh, to kind of see what is the difference between last year like see the percentage difference between last year's demo last year ship demo and this year ship demo so if you don't have an idea of how to do that uh, like uh, as we are getting into statistics in next uh, like what in further classes you can uh, we can discuss there but as of now uh, you can simply assume like you want to see what is the amount you shipped for last year and what is the amount for you shipped for this year and you can do that simply need, need, need not worry about any percentage difference so that is that simple so uh, in such cases you can immediately uh, kind of come up with, use this group by and get it uh, assume that you are sitting with your manager and your manager may ask you a question saying that uh, I have a particular ASIN. ASIN is nothing but a unique keyword given to an item name. And then uh, he may ask you, like, for this particular item, uh, what is the number of quantity uh, sold to a business? So you can simply use group by on that particular ASIN. Okay. And then use the quantity column to aggregate to submit, and you probably get the output. So that is that easy. So it is all about. Uh, what inference you want and where you can use group by so you, you have to figure it out in what kind of portions you can use group by or what kind of inferences or what kinds of insights where you can use group by so uh, this is about group by please let me know uh, if you have any doubts here I did not get you. Can you please be loud? Hmm? You want to do it for two columns at a time. See, here there is a catch. Okay, you uh, you might have number of categories different in the second column, right? Uh, assume that uh, let's let's take about uh, maybe a column called B two B only. So you in B two B you have only two unique columns, okay? And in uh, C status you have three three unique elements. So ultimately you have to kind like uh, you you need to get the cross product. Like you need to have six different conditions and result the amount. Okay, so uh, that can be done, but the problem is that the computing time will be uh, like what little more than when you're competing with one single column. So it is that uh, you need to figure out it is if it is really needed, uh, if you want to check all those conditions together. Yeah. Any other doubts? I can wait maybe for a few seconds to try it out by yourself and then we can move further. Yeah. So moving ahead, let's, yeah. Yeah, we can, we can definitely use. It is not that you cannot use. It is only just a, uh, catch whether you want to really do it uh, 
because as I told you, for maybe for 100, or 100 rows, it might take, uh, depending on the computing capacity, it might take a second or two. But when we have millions of rows, then it might take more computing time uh, for get, to get the output. So it is just on that, nothing uh, to worry. You can definitely use it. If you want to see an example, we can see. So just an example, we can so we can simply write. So now what do we want? We want both uh, the columns, which would be C status. And let's take maybe one more column called uh, business to business only. Let's take this one only. And then let's say I want to do amount dot sum and let me kind of print this. As I told you that uh, you will have six different conditions as we already spoke. In cancel, you again, you'll have false true. In shipped also, you'll have again have false true. In unshipped also, you'll have again false true. So whether you, ju you just have to worry about whether this bifurcation is really needed uh, or not. You can also apply more than two columns. It is just that uh, the more number of columns that many bifurcations or granularity of data will be created and if it is of some use, then definitely yes, you can use it. Or you can change it to quantity as well to check whether that works for others as well. Like just to see, yeah. So this is the quantity and this is the amount. So always make sure that you have a numeric column here because you are going to apply some uh, uh, statistical measure. Uh, so only numerical columns can do that. So if you are going for mode, yeah, you can use categorical column, but if you are using all like what uh, statistical inferences, which applies to numerical columns, then you have to use uh, only those uh, measures. So you'll know for which columns, which measures will be used in statistics. But right now, uh, this is one of the example I can tell and any other things like you can use uh, mean, I can just say, or maybe let me, change it to mean this even works or you can change it to median so this is mean we have right now or you can simply or let me just copy here this one and then change it to median and this even works and you have standard deviation and others so that is we can see them later so you have to choose what uh, like what statistical measure you want to kind of apply on this So uh, hoping that uh, this is clear, I'll be moving forward to pivot. And now uh, there is a catch here. So pivot ion group by works in a similar way. So pivot, what it does is it basically transforms the, uh, the number of columns which you give as an input and the value and then give you the output. But here in group by, it, it also does a similar thing in backend, but uh, computationally group by is basically a lighter version of pivot you can assume. So I especially took group by even though we are discussing pivot is because to kind of uh, say you that if you are using less number of columns group by is efficient. If you are kind of pivoting the whole data frame, then uh, pivot is useful. So let's see an example of pivot It is similar. The output would be also similar. It is just that the way of doing it is different. So let me just kind of print and then say df dot create a pivot. So that nothing but I'm just creating a pivot table and then I'll say what to index. So index is nothing but I want to say which column should be put here. Something like I want C status. So I'll just start with C status. 
or basically what column to group by that is what you can assume so i want to group by c status and then you can choose what columns you want to kind of uh, uh, choose to aggregate so uh, columns equals to then you can choose uh, i'll be choosing now amount as a column to aggregate and then you can there is a, a keyword called ag function this is called aggregation function what kind of aggregation you want to kind of apply so i'll be applying some in first and then we can see things later so i'll just run this and now you can see uh, it is kind of picking up all the columns uh, you can see uh, c status unshipped and shipped you have but you have all the columns here uh, which have been transformed so what you can simply do is that you can say df of c status and then amount Is giving me an empty data frame. Let me print only C status and amount and just check what is happening. Print df of yeah, we do have this thing. And then I want to dot pivot table indexes C status and columns amount aggregation sum shouldn't show null. Let me create a data frame df check equals to. It is did I miss any syntax thing? Take index C status columns. Let me replace these columns with values and then check. Give me a second. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I used a different argument, so you can also uh, like what give what kind of columns you want to uh, like what show so here i can probably pass on maybe i want to also see uh, quantity so don't we have quantity we do have quantity right or let me change it to business to business it should work let's check oh sorry i am using df check right i am really sorry i need to kind of supply quantity here first and then kind of call it there so that is my mistake which i was doing so run this here and then probably supply quantity here quantity so now you can see so probably what it has done is it has 
probably uh, pivoted the whole uh, C status. Okay, I'll just show you here what exactly is happening so that you can understand what is happening. So I'll just select all this stuff, insert a pivot table. Okay. So what I did right now is I have set index as C status. Nothing but I have put C status in rows. So I'll just put a uh, very courier status. Yeah, I'll just put courier status in rows. So you can see uh, canceled, shipped, unshipped. That is what you are also seeing here. Canceled, shipped, unshipped. So what I did, I actually moved this quantity into columns. So now you can see uh, because, oh, sorry, I'm really sorry. Now is it clear? I, I will not be able to zoom this because uh, this is uh, yeah inbuilt from uh, yeah, Excel. So uh, I have put courier status in rows and quantity in columns, which has given me some output like this. Okay, so it, it will like uh, now what? I need to do I want to sum up the amount so I you can see I took values as amount I have summed it up so what you can do just check the amount and put it in values so now you can see this is the value you got so we will be seeing the same output there as well so for shipped for quantity one you see some 7060 something like that and you can also see uh, it is the same number for shipped for quantity one you have this many number of uh, uh, like this many number of quantity one has been shipped that is what we are trying to understand. You can change this quantity to maybe to a different categorical column, which will make more sense because here you need not worry about uh, uh, maybe how many I like what items in quantity one you, which you have shipped in quantity two. Sorry. I, I can't hear you. Sorry. Ship state. Uh, yeah, we can have ship state or maybe ship. Uh, yeah. Uh, so what was that a ship state? Let me check that. Okay, hyphen ship city. Okay, ship hyphen state. Okay, ship hyphen state. We can do this yeah. And then let me run. Okay, I should add ship state here as well. I forgot. Ship state. So when we take uh, directly DF, problem is that it is transforming every column. That is the reason we were unable to kind of identify the uh, like what output that's the reason now we are kind of only taking a uh, uh, few columns to see the exact output now you can see how many have been shipped to andaman nicobar andhra pradesh and so on now the same thing can be done uh, like here as well so let's go to sheet one and then say instead of quantity let's remove quantity from columns and then let's put a uh, ship state ship state in columns and then you can see that you'll have the same numbers. So Andaman Nicobar 136201. And you can see yeah, Andaman Nicobar 136201. And now you see some uh, like what uh, uh, small difference here. Uh, Excel is kind of also showing how many blank values are there. But by default, Pandas is cancelling out blank values. Otherwise, it is not showing you blank values. Okay. So there is an argument which you can also kind of put to show blank. But... Uh, which I cannot recall right now, but you can explore in the documentation for pivot table. Uh, there is something like blanks equal to true or some some kind of keyword you, which you have, which you can use to also show blanks. Now, which we are, uh, which we have expelled here uh, by default. And uh, instead of say, saying shipped, unshipped also, you can use maybe any ASIN uh, a unique identifier or maybe any other column as well in in place of C status to see uh, what has happened in what city or what state or any other categorical column which you want to use so it is same like group by but it is like you can uh, kind of uh, create a pivot table similar pi uh, pivot table similar like one in excel so here when you saw it was just uh, maybe one or two uh, values together it will show you like what the relation between them and the aggregation values but here it is like it will show you the every value which you have there so that is the difference between group by and pivot that is the reason i also told you when you have minimal number of columns you use group by and when you have more and you want to see a different structure completely then you use pivot table and this will be also 
this will again be a uh, complete data frame and which you, you can use it for your use again so that that is possible uh, to tell you uh, like an example so df pivot that is what I'll do uh, and I'll remove one bracket here I'll just close this here so df pivot and then say I'll just print p df pivot it is one and the same I'm not doing anything I just stored in a different variable okay and then I'll just run and now you see you have every data here I know what I'll say I'll probably say print df dot pivot sorry df pivot dot columns to see what like what what are the column names we have in df pivot so now you see probably all the uh, like what uh, state names you have in column names see this uh, difference so here it is not a different data frame it is just an output of what you want to see but here it is a complete data frame so now uh, you are kind of creating one more data frame out of your raw data and you are you can use it for your use now assume that you only want again uh, the data for maybe one like what uh, only of one column now you can simply say print df pivot of and maybe you only want for Rajasthan okay let me or maybe yeah let me take Kerala it is simple so just I'll put Kerala and then you let's see yeah you see this is the data for only Kerala so it is that simple so when you see this output and this output it will be again one and the same okay there is there's no difference in this output or it's just that uh, that when and where uh, what do you want to see and what do you want to create will depend whether you want to use group by or pivot for an instantaneous output and preview you can use group by and if you want to kind of create is uh, like what different data frame from the current data from the raw data frame by transposing all the columns then you can use pivot so it is just depending on the requirement you can use I can wait for a couple of minutes here to allow you to check this yeah here instead of sum you can use mean and then okay let me just put it some here then probably uh, yeah mean and then kind of run this yeah so this is now the mean for each uh, state so any statistical measure you can just check the documentation and you will have the keyword for that okay for standard deviation it is std uh, for uh, like average you can also use avg if i am not wrong let me just take mean and average both the same but i'm just want i want to check that you can use avg as well uh, to my knowledge let's check if i can use that oh you don't have avg you see uh, let me just try to type average i don't think average also exists but let's check no average is also not there so it is you can just check the documentation to check what statistical measure and what is the keyword and accordingly you can use Please let me know once you are done and uh, I can move forward for uh, map and apply oh, sorry merge will will see merge at the last let's go for map and apply first uh, because we don't have two different data sets right now let's create our own uh, like dummy data sets for merge to see like thing map and apply are like easy 
things like group by and pivot. Yes. Thank you. So now uh, to just check map. So why we why we need map? So let's go back uh, to our raw data set. So now if you see here, uh, all these particular uh, columns have maybe most of the uh, columns have categorical data, and maybe you need to kind of change it to numerical data. Something like maybe you want to assign uh, value one to shipped value 2 to unshipped value 3 to cancelled okay or maybe when you have uh, uh, like maybe true or false you want to say one is true and two is false or, or maybe one is true and zero is false or maybe if you have ship city and you have some codes for those ship cities instead of having the whole name maybe you need to have only first three letters okay maybe uh, for bengaluru it is b and for navy mumbai it is navy or chc and so on you have this mapping with you already and you want to kind of apply that mapping to the data set so how do you do that is uh, like what uh, map suffices us so to just give you an example now what i'll do is like i'll probably create uh, one mapping so let me just say uh, like what dummy mapping okay so what this dummy mapping uh, has is uh, i'll just give value one sorry I'll just give uh, shipped and uh, for shipped I'll just give value 1 okay and then I'll say for un for unshipped let me copy it from here actually yeah I have unshipped I'll just probably put 2 for unshipped and then maybe for cancelled let me take 0 so let me for cancelled let me take zero so i have created this mapping and i want to apply this mapping to the whole data set so now you can see i have almost all one lakh rows for one lakh rows i cannot say uh, like what just now uh, i cannot do manually like this zero then you put uh, sorry uh, this is one right so just put one here and then put one then one put one or maybe you kind of put one and then drag it accordingly or use some shortcut and then probably like what uh, just say command down or control down and then it actually copy pastes every value even this is a manual touch point so if it is a repeated uh, work for you to do every time uh, when there is a raw data set has been provided to you what you could simply do create a mapping like this and simply use the keyword called map so what you could do now df of c status that is what my uh, column is equals to or maybe i'll just create a uh, uh, two different columns c status mapped and c status so that we can see the differences c status mapped equals to then i'll say df of c status dot map and then say uh, i have the variable dummy mapping so what it does dot map will just read the dictionary dummy mapping it will see what is the column value and what has what it has been assigned and then accordingly apply it to c status column and store it in c status mapped so now we can see print df of c status mapped and comma like c status let's see both the columns so that we can see uh, the mapping has been done properly or not okay so let's run these three lines oh sorry my bad two braces i am always forgetting these things yeah. oh it hasn't mapped anything because yeah uh, shipped shipped s capital s okay so let me run it again yeah now you can see wherever it is shipped it has put one 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 okay uh, we are unable to see cancelled so what you could do right now is simply Uh, yeah you can see the output so you uh, wherever it is shipped it, you can see one and wherever it is other keyword you can see uh, zero or maybe th two let's check that by simply saying that let's save it in a uh, csv file and then check to csv and then check uh, c status dot csv or c status mapping dot csv that is what the name we give 
and then run this file and let's check whether these two columns have been mapped properly or not yeah we have run this column sorry we have run this line let me let me go to the folder go to folder and root cut come yes then here i need to have a file called c shutters mapping csv yes here it is and then now you can see wherever it is shipped okay let me zoom in a little yeah so hope it is visible now so wherever it is shipped it is one and wherever it is cancelled it is zero and let's check for unshipped uh, yeah wherever it is unshipped it is two so this kind of mapping can be done and now you may ask what if i have to modify these changes in the same column not by creating a new column all you have to do is uh, i have saved it to a different column to show you the changes i'll just write hit here so you have to use the same column name and it will modify the column itself so i'll write the comment here used to used to modify same column with mapping so demonstrated with a different column to check the changes So uh, this is what uh, mapping does, and you may ask me like where this is significant. So when like in future when you are using statistical concepts like linear regression and logistic regression, or maybe any other regression concept, or maybe you are trying to do some predictive analytics, or uh, you are trying to kind of get some inferences out of the out of the data to see the linearity between two columns, you may have categorical data. and you may have to convert this categorical data into numerical data because uh, categorical data cannot be uh, kind of uh, trained as a as a model so at that particular time if uh, you can kind of convert any ordinal or categorical data uh, to uh, any numerical data by using a simple mapping we also have a different method or we also have a uh, like what uh, a library called scikit learn and it also have a, has a syntax which uh, which it this step can be automatically applied but i am just trying to tell you where it actually applies more so even this mapping step can be avoided by directly using that syntax but we can learn it in future when when we have we cover more of statistical concepts and i'll wait for a couple of more minutes here to kind of allow you to try it uh, try it with a different column maybe uh, give some uh, values for maybe states or cities accordingly and then uh, check the mapping whether it is working or not uh, replicating me will be always easy but trying uh, out yourself with a different uh, uh, example will be kind of uh, a learning to you so please always like repli uh, like what uh, replicating my screen is okay it's good to learn but always try to uh, apply the same changes with a different column and you may come up with some new doubts uh, maybe some some methods may not work for some columns and you may ask me why this is not working here. and we can accordingly discuss even if i don't know we can figure it out together so always try to check it check with a new column or try it out with on your own with a di different example yeah so this column will not be created so this column will not be created and c status column whatever is there will be auto modified with the mapping so wherever it is shipped will be replaced by 1 wherever it is unshipped will be replaced by 2 and cancel will be replaced by 0 in the same column so to kind of demonstrate or maybe uh, to show you that the changes have been applied this i created this column and applied this but in real time you may not have to create a new column instead you can you have to modify the same column so this will modify the same column 
uh, here I am only printing uh, or maybe I am just actually printing this column which I have created and the old column here okay so and I am kind of uh, saving it to a CSV file so that we were able to check uh, two columns data so so that we were able to check here you can see uh, the column names C status mapped and C status so these two columns we were able to kind of check uh, whether the mapping has been successfully applied or not so you can see shipped has been mapped with one cancelled has been mapped with zero and wherever this unshipped is mapped with two i'll just show you yeah unshipped is mapped with two that is what the mapping which we have uh, supplied here so uh, just to kind of see the results we have done this because if i modify the same column i don't know where the values are shipped where the values are unshipped and i won't be able to demonstrate you so that is the only reason i did it Any doubts here? So we can move to apply. So apply is something uh, is a combination of maybe a couple of things. So uh, okay, le let's not uh, explain you like that. Okay, let's uh, simply understand like this. Maybe you have a, a simple column. So maybe let's take amount column only. And now what you want to do in amount column is like you want to square the amount column in a different column. Okay, I'm just taking an example. This is where the nowhere done. So amount column will not be squared or maybe amount column. Uh, like I, I, I'm trying to say square of the amount column. You want to create a new column. So now uh, you can simply do uh, like this. Okay, let me take uh, give, give an example. This is a very vague example. Uh, I am just taking a dummy example. Uh, it is not a real time example at all. So just to say DF amount squared. Okay, sorry. It's a, uh, yeah, DF amount squared. This is a column I'm creating equals to DF of amount. I can say into into two. So nothing but you, you might have already seen this syntax. You are kind of uh, uh, familiar with squaring of numbers by now. So this is a power operator. Nothing but you are kind of uh, you are if if you have a amount two, you are kind of squaring it. Nothing but it will become two square four. That is what I I want it in a column called amount squared. And then I'll just print amount and amount squared both to kind of uh, check the output again. So amount squared. And then amount. So let me run this. Yeah, you can see that this is the amount and this is the amount square. Nothing but 647 square, 406 square, 329 square, and and so on. You may see some uh, like what e values. Nothing but it is a very large number. It is kind of trying to sh uh, like what shrink it down. But it is the correct output, so need not worry about the output right now. Uh, so this is what I was just trying to do. Uh, but what if you want to do? Uh, what if you want to apply a condition that maybe uh, you will only uh, square odd numbers, but not even numbers? So how do you do it now? You have to check a condition that if the like if the uh, amount is a odd number or even number and then probably you need to do this so now uh, like what you can still write if condition and so on and do but that wouldn't make uh, like what the, the readability of the code would not be good and if you want to apply multiple conditions like maybe you need to create a for loop okay do some changes add up some values then whatever results comes then you have to put that result into the cell so all these things if you want to do you cannot do uh, it like you can you cannot always do it in a uh, do it in multiple lines 
uh, and if you have a repetitive uh, uh, like watch statements like that maybe you want to create a month square then you want to do a month cubed okay or maybe uh, a month half and so on okay so uh, you you cannot actually do it again and again uh, below so you might have already learned uh, like what where functions come in place and why do we use functions i think what we, we use probably functions to kind of get rid of repeatability so and also leverage the power of reusability we kind of write a small function and probably what we'll try to do we kind of uh, try to reuse it again and again wherever we need so in the same way now what i'll what i'll do i'll just try to try to create a small function here which says define some custom function define custom function okay and then say i'll just pass on x to the function okay so now what i'll do i'll say if x percentile 2 equals to equals to 0 nothing but i'm checking if the given number is a even number okay then you kind of pass pass nothing but it will not do anything okay else i'll probably say you kind of uh, x uh, like you modify x equals to x x square sorry small x x square and then you say here you probably return here yeah you probably return x so what i am trying to do i am uh, like what creating a very small function to check if the given number is a odd number or even number if it is an even number you pause pass nothing but you don't do anything if it is an odd number you kind of square that number and store it in x and you kind of return that x it is that uh, simple so that is what i am trying to do so what you could uh, what i want to do i want to apply this function to a column called the amount here so how do i do that is let me just put it down sorry let me just put it down here the function is here and then i'll say maybe uh, df of odd number squared equals to df of amount dot apply dot apply and inside the uh, like what braces you kind of give the function name custom function so now what it will do let me also print both odd number squared and uh, amount yeah let me just run this oh sorry i haven't run custom function so yeah you see here probably uh, wherever it is a odd number there only it will kind of uh, uh, square the number and wherever it is uh, yeah wherever it is even number it will not square the number did we get the output right it seems a bit uh, like what bit wrong let's kind of check let's kind of do uh, like what x by 2 we can see the output immediately uh, i'll just run this again instead of x square let's do only x by 2 yeah 647 has been uh, like what halved for by halved by 2 and you got 323 and 406 is an even number and 406 as it is it has been not changed and you can see 329 has been halved uh, 753 has been halved 574 is not halved and so on so here if it is even number we said don't don't do anything if it is odd number you just have the number so you can see that that has been done here so now what i want to kind of explain from this topic is uh, if you have custom action and you want to repeat the custom action for multiple columns together okay and what you can simply do is right you can kind of create that function and apply the function using the keyword called apply and this doesn't uh, only do such small things it will do many large things okay so you, you can write you can write a function of any size okay and that will be applied onto the column as long as your function is valid so it is just that if you can write a valid function 
which will give some output then definitely your uh, function can be applied to any other any column wherever it is applicable so you can use it for any use case and we can also replicate this mapping thing this mapping thing also using a function uh, like i can wait for five minutes to kind of try it uh, or uh, and then what i want you to do is uh, uh, you can try this mapping example using a function nothing but i want the same output that uh, shipped has to be mapped with one unshipped has to be mapped with two cancelled has to be mapped with zero but i probably uh, like what uh, i want to write that in a function and then apply to uh, shipped courier state sorry yeah uh, what, what is that thing c status column courier status column so just try this example and then immediately take take down that for homework or like i i can wait for five more minutes to kind of uh, you to solve that problem and we only have one last thing so we have enough time it is just 10 you can just spend 15 20 minutes more five minutes for solving this problem and then 10 minutes for uh, like what handling merge and then pandas will be done for today and if you ha if someone has any custom idea to check if that works we can do it uh, now and please feel free to drop if if you have any questions in python as well which have been covered in earlier classes don't hesitate if uh, if you need help we can cover that as well maybe while we are having while we are discussing something else
uh, see krishna i think there is some miscommunication uh, i i am not yet done with the class today we have one more concept left i think so yeah we are talking with merge topic yeah so uh, i i was actually waiting for people to reply whether they understood this topic so that we can just see one more example to uh, show uh, how this works and then move to merge so maybe 10 15 minutes more and i'll i'll wind up for today no 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 worries Yeah, I, I, let's cover excess as well so that nobody has any doubt so that you can uh, like or try with a different example. So uh, it will be clear how to write a function in the given thing. So as I told you that I need this particular mapping to be uh, created as a part of the function. Uh, and then uh, I want to apply this to a column called uh, courier status. So now what we can do is uh, let's kind of create a small function df mapping for shipped uh, for c status okay let me just write some column name like this sorry some function name like this and then i'll apply same x uh, as a argument or parameter and then i'll probably say if x equals to equals to shipped then you probably say x equals to one okay and then else if or elif x equals to equals to unshipped you probably put x to 2 and then else you can put x to 3 because cancelled whether you kind of apply it or not the remaining things will be cancelled so i'm just moving to 3 assuming that there are no nulls we do we do have nulls in our uh, particular data frame uh, you can also write okay uh, let's let's not confuse anybody let's kind of write that statement also else if uh, x equals to equals to cancelled then you kind of put that value 3 x equals to 3 and then else x equals to 4 nothing but if i'm assuming that is there any other kind of data then there 4 comes or let me just put it to zero as per our mapping conditions so now i'll say return x and then probably what i'll do i'll take df of c status function mapped equals to df of c status dot apply and then just take this function here and then simply print both the columns uh, df and i want this column comma this column to check whether the data has been mapped or not so let me run all these things now you can see uh, earlier we haven't mapped null values uh, this null values doesn't have any output earlier i'll just show you here back so in when we were using mapped mapped function or map function uh, or uh, like map syntax for null values no value has been assigned uh, for shipped one has been assigned cancel zero has been assigned unshipped two has been assigned right now you can check nan has been assigned with four because we say if uh, none of the conditions satisfy it should map with four so we also have four so uh, you can also do with map and apply both it gives you the same output it is just that uh, where you want to use and why you want to use function so if you want to kind of uh, repeat this particular step multiple times for multiple columns uh, uh, with the same similar kind of data then yes you can use a function for reusability but in uh, like what you can use map for a single instance so it is just that and this is the solution for the uh, like what ta quick task which we were discussing and you can move to merge if you people understood what i did here and it's a very simple program in python and i have just added function to it that's it
please let me know if this concept is clear uh, once you are done trying it and we can move to merge Great. So uh, merge is just to kind of join two different data sets uh, in a way we want. Assume that, uh, let's take a small example uh, in Excel itself and see how it works and then we come back here. Uh, let's take maybe an index uh, saying A, B, C, D, E and we have uh, like what two columns uh, maybe let me say size or maybe yeah let me just take name name and then let me take age or oh, let's not take age name and then company so then we do have uh, you can simply assume this as the id of the person or any person let me take uh, in, any any number of persons something like maybe sherat uh, my name itself Anurup and we have uh, Dinesh, Madhu and Bharat. So we have a uh, few names here and they are working it some, in some companies. Let me assume that the, each of them they are working in different companies. Maybe company T, company U, U, Y, V, B. Okay and we have the similar kind of data set here which says their salary and then their salary might be some thousand two thousand and then so on let me just kind of go here yeah let me just see yeah so or else maybe let me put three thousand four thousand and five thousand yeah so now uh, what i want to do is ultimately kind of uh, join this both and then also kind of put the salary column here itself okay so maybe i also have uh, data for other people as well maybe f uh, g maybe some person uh, x and some person y i do have data their data as well so with maybe uh, 2500 and 3000 uh, this is actually a sql concept as well which which comes later and you'll understand joins more but I'll just try to co cover uh, con cover the concepts on the top level and then close it for today. Uh, and once you once the SQL is done, uh, maybe revisiting this topic will definitely help. Uh, so what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to like actually join these both tables and then probably join the salary column here itself so that I can identify who is earning how much and what company they are working in one single place. So here we have two tables. In one table we have salary and when one table we have company uh, you can also remove this particular column because we also have we already have id as the uh, like what unique key which we can use to join both so we can say if a equals to a then put it here if b equals to b then put it here then if c equals to c put it here and so on but for this particular uh, task to be done you basically have some kinds of join concepts and that i won't cover in deep today but I'll just explain you by showing some pictures. So maybe let's take uh, joins in SQL. Let me take SQL examples only. Images. Yeah. This this particular. Uh, I hope you have already seen all these kinds of uh, uh, images in mathematical concepts. Maybe when you are learning sets as a concept, you might have already seen. So what I, what we are trying to learn from this particular uh, diagrams is that. When you say when you have a table A and when you have a table B and you are joining them and you only want the items where uh, the records are matching in both. So which is this intersection part, then we call it as an inner join. OK, or maybe we only say uh, we need only matching records in both of the tables. OK, so if this will say that you are only expecting 
the records from the left table which are matching with right but not right so to just kind of cover it more elaborately so here if you have these two tables when you left to join only a b c d e will join here and f g will not join because there is no data for f g here to join so that is the problem uh, with left to join actually it is not a problem it is probably also a solution when you want only the records from this table but not from this table okay so you can kind of uh, figure it out when you want what and as well as you have multiple joints like this okay so today i will not cover all these joints you can kind of visit this concept in sql and once it is done there are keywords you can use in pandas for all these joints and then probably uh, figure it out here itself right now i'll just take both of both of those examples one is inner join one is left join let me do one thing let me kind of uh, remove d as well to show you an example for inner join and left join both now uh, let's start with an example and let's also put the result here for what we will get for inner join and what we will get for left join so we say this is table a match center let me say okay uh, company table and then let's say this is a salary table so now what i am trying to do is that wherever the records match between both of these things i want to create a uh, table which says uh, company and salary both company and salary both so what i want to do i'll just put id so because we are using id as a column to kind of join okay and then we have five names let's put five names here first oh sorry uh, let me put it from here five names and name as a column and then we have company as a column we have five values and this is not the complete result i am just trying to show uh, like what uh, create uh, the data first and then show you what is a uh, like what result so now when i say inner join i will only get the matching records from this both so what are those matching records so i'll be joining this table on column i and column e because these are the unique identifiers for each of these values so a and a are available b and b are available c and c are available d is available here but d is not available here e and e is available fg is not available here and uh, he available here and not available here so the result we get is we won't get d so probably d will be uh, like what uh, you will not get d in probably inner join i'll just write it here inner join okay so then now salary will be so whatever the salary you have so for a it is 1000 and for b it is 2000 for c it is 3000 for e it is 5000 so that is what the salary you will get for inner join so for the same thing if you do a left join so i'll just copy this and just paste it oh yeah let me paste it here so probably for left join so i'll get all the records from the left table which is all these records will be uh, like what i'll get uh so i'll get all the records but from the left table i'll only get the matching salary so now you see for a column for a for id a you have 1000 for id b you have 2000 for id c you have 3000 for id d you don't have any value in column uh, salary so in table salary so you'll get null here and for e you have uh, 5000 so this is what the output you get for left join so probably uh, you will understand the more when you can cover sql but this is a simple explanation for inner join and left join and the same can be replic uh, the same can be understood by seeing this uh, particular uh, like what figures for left join you are getting the matching records from b which is this intersection part and all the records from the left table but for the inner join you are only getting the intersection part nothing but which both the table contains or with the data where both the table uh, the data from both the table match together so now uh, let's kind of see this example in terms of pandas how can how can you do and that you can do with a uh, like what keyword call or maybe syntax called merge so uh, as we don't have two different data sources or data sets let's kind of create two different tables 
df company is a table let's create equals to pd dot data frame and then you probably create uh, a data frame here i'll just create uh, or else let me do something let me kind of say company table and that equals to dictionary inside this dictionary i'll probably say what columns i have i have id equals to let me put id to let me i'll just take the same example a comma b comma c comma d comma e and then we have a uh, name as a column we have sharat And we have one more column called company. Let me just write uh, some dummy companies. Uh, maybe something like X, comma uh, Y, comma Z, comma U, comma V. And let me replicate this table. And then put uh, this as salary table and then we no need to have company here instead we have salary we don't want the name as I said and then we just uh, put a uh, thousand two thousand three thousand four thousand 5000 and then we have two more records FNG for 2000 F and then G then this data let's check for 2500 and then we have 3000 so we have these two tables I'll create two different uh, like what tables these are just dictionaries which I created and I'll be converting these dictionaries to data frames using this keyword called data frame which I already told you yesterday so uh, df company pd dot data frame I'll just pass on company table okay and then I'll probably uh, then also choose df salary and then equals to same line I'll just copy paste uh, but instead of company table I'll just take salary table okay so once we have this now I'll say uh, merge the table I'll just start with inner join okay and then say pd dot merge so we are trying to merge both the tables together uh, so which tables we have we have df company and comma df salary so we want to uh, so this is these are the keywords which we need to give first table or the left table right table and then comma sorry comma on which column you want to kind of uh, uh, join the table so as I said we will be joining the table on column ID so I'll just put say on ID and then how how is nothing but what in uh, what type of join you want to make that is inner join so now I'll just print merge to table inner variable let's see what results this gives oh I did not give comma yeah yes thank you so much so I have run you can see this is the data I got so Sherat, Anurup, Dinesh, Madhu, Bharat so all the data uh, I have got with salary as a column as well we I think I did some mistake here okay in salary we don't have uh, Madhu as a record let me remove in salary Madhu as a record which is D I'll just remove D as well as 4000 here so when I run this again so you will probably see only matching records nothing but a b c e uh, in the same way you can see i told you that you will get a b c e and this is the data you will get 
and you all you also got the same data so uh, if the same thing i use for left so let me just write the same thing uh, but i'll just use left here then also use left here then i'll use left here as well and then run this and you can see that i get a uh, null value for madhu especially because we do uh, like what uh, we don't have record of madhu in right table so and we we want to kind of put all the like we want to kind of retrieve all the values from left table and this is the output you get and you can see that the same output we said like for madhu you will get null and uh, you'll probably have all of the values so it is uh, uh, you may think it is kind of very cryptic today i can completely understand i can just feel it in uh, like what by being in your shoes but the problem is that uh, you need to definitely understand this particular concept uh, when you are learning pandas because uh, there are several instances when you are working there will be a need to kind of uh, join multiple tables uh, in different in several ways so uh, i probably uh, kind of use it mostly like at least four days a week in my current work so i think uh, this is uh, a very handy concept to learn that is the reason i told you and we also have other joins like right join uh, like what full join uh, even we have uh, there are a couple of other joins uh, i don't want to kind of again confuse you a lot by uh, stating all the list but once sql is done you can just simply change this keyword here and then i uh, like what check with an example and it works so uh, the syntax is same but it's just that this keyword can be changed in for whatever the join you want and then things work and please try and this is a big example which we took in whole of our class today or maybe even from last three days so uh, trying this is worth uh, so please try and uh, check if uh, you are able to get this concept or else i am open to elaborate sure no, I'll, i'll wait for a few more minutes
guys just a suggestion uh, regarding uh, to enhance your learning experience and i i have received feedback uh, from one of our team members saying that they are unable to kind of concentrate on uh, like what both the screens together like the one which i am explaining and the one which you are trying so it's worth you can have a second screen maybe a monitor or a different laptop if you if you have it handy uh, where you can see my explanation at, at one screen and then you can parallelly try it in another screen and this will definitely increase your learning experience as well as uh, you can try everything parallelly and come up with questions immediately and because toggling between two screens is a very tedious part in whole of your learning when you are attending such online learning uh, sessions so uh, i would rather recommend uh, everybody who can afford a monitor you can buy or maybe just use a second screen if you have a tab or maybe another laptop in your home join the class from one laptop and then try it in another la like try everything on another laptop so i think be more uh, better and to extend this topic call like the match topic you can just uh, even before learning sql you can just identify how many types of joins you have like uh, in how many ways you can join two different tables or two different data sources and then simply change this particular uh, like what keyword uh, with a different join something like right join or maybe pull out or join like you can identify the number of joins you have and then change the keyword here uh and then i uh, like what check the output and you will know how these tables are joined and you can also uh, kind of explore uh, where these kinds of kind of joins can be used and uh, and why exactly these joins concept have been evolved so this as a homework you can understand because this is a small uh, theoretical homework which you can do or exploration you can do to better understand sql and because uh, if you understand this you will understand uh, even why sql is uh, being used uh, like what in most of the uh, like what companies as their primary data base so actually it is a querying language not as a primary data base but primary language to query uh, data sets so that is what uh, just to correct my statement and please let me know if you have tried this sure uh, uh give me one second i'll just kind of take a snapshot and put it in our chat so that it'll be easy for anybody who is trying to cop like what to get some results out of it yeah yeah you can share your screen right now.
Yes. Yes. But the problem here is salary uh, list has more than five values. Because uh, the number of IDs you have, the number of records you will have in a data set, data set. So that is a very important thing to note. Yes. Uh, you are saying merged uh, pd dot merge not there is no d Yes. Yeah. And uh, you can see one uh, interesting observation even when you kind of run left. Uh, let's, uh, let's see both the outputs and then discuss one small thing here. Yeah, if you see there is, there'll be no output in both of the outputs because the number of records in both the tables are similar like the company table and the salary table. So if you have one extra record in salary table, maybe uh, a record called F uh, and then you can put one other uh, salary number. And then now you can run this probably uh, you both run both together. So you, you'll, let's see the both outputs together. Like you need to rerun from 74 again because you changed the primary data set. So, yeah. Now it will not pick up because the 83, 84 are the lines where you are creating your data sets, like tables, especially data frames. So, uh, you have to run 83, 84 again at least. Yeah, now you can see that uh, in inner join, you'll only see A, B, C, D, E. Okay, because you won't be able to see F uh, because F is an unmatched record uh, in both the tables. And then in left join, even you won't be seeing F because F is from the right table and you are only doing left join. So to, to see a better output of uh, left join, you can remove one record, maybe A or B or C uh, from salary table and also remove the salary uh, uh, element as well so that you can see a better output. So this is what I have done. I have removed D and added FG. Uh, so to kind of explain. So now in one record A, you will see a null value uh, because for uh, for A uh, name, for uh, what is the name, for Sherat, you don't have the salary available in salary table. So that is the reason it is showing null. If it is having a salary, then it will show salary. So here the catch is that you might be in a situation where you want all the details from left table and only the matching details from the right table then at that place you will use uh, left join. If it is vice versa then you will use right join. If it is kind of you only want matching records from both the tables together then you'll, they'll use, then you will use inner join. So yeah you can also try with right so that it, you can understand. Uh, and even if you want uh, both uh, all the records from both the tables then there is a uh, keyword called full join or you can just simply check for full and that should work yeah, maybe right join will help you understand better for now and simply right will uh, like only 92 93 can be run not everything because you have already the tables ready so yeah now you can see that uh, f is kind of uh, f doesn't have any name or company from a table or the company table that's the reason you have null values of both the columns yeah. 
you can use full. Uh, just check for full. Uh, I never use full. I, I should be that should be only full. Let, let's we, we can check it out. No, it is not full join. Uh, just check outer. Uh, instead of full, uh, yeah, instead of full in how, just check outer. So it is basically we call it as full outer join, but just to kind of check, yeah, we can run this both. I hope outer should work. Uh, Yes, that's the reason you get null uh, in salary for Sherat and then for F as a salary, you don't have name and company in the company table. That's the reason you have null values. I think what it will kind of club both company and salary table together, no matter what values are available or not available. So, so wherever it is not available, it will simply, simply show null. Because for uh, for in salary table for F you don't have any name and company. Uh, yeah, for for no uh, for there is no F record and there is no name and company for F. So you need to add both both of those. And you you missed adding company uh, in third. Yes. No. Uh, when you give it as a string, no, nothing is there is no problem. So guys, if anybody has any other doubts, I would be happy to clarify. And with this topic, we'll be closing joins today. And uh, yeah, so this, yeah, as I told you that joins part will especially come in SQL and it is very important concept in SQL. So uh, you'll uh, like what better do uh, like, or maybe do more operations on joins in SQL. Uh, at that particular, of uh, at that instance of time uh, this concept what we have discussed today will definitely enlighten and also give you a better understanding uh, and we can revisit this concept once the joins uh, has been done or maybe has been covered so that you can see joins in both SQL and pandas together at one place and see how both of them are behaving it is it is one and the same just to kind of understand uh, uh, the syntax in both the cases you can compare uh, once the joins concept is covered in SQL and I was hoping that I'll cover maybe a couple of syntaxes in NumPy which we weren't able to do and it's already 10.50 uh, we are day by day increasing time and I don't want to uh, like what extend anymore uh, maybe maybe in future if I'm covering some other concept I'll uh, something like visualization part I'll probably uh, pick up uh, NumPy as a uh, in, in one session to just give you an understanding of NumPy arrays and matrices and uh, that's all uh, for today and I can wait for two more minutes to see if anybody has any doubts. I'm just stopping the recording for today.